Namaste. Yesterday, a man asked a question that now my Ketu Mahadasha has begun. So which path should I choose? Spiritual or career? So people have this kind of ideas that when Ketu Mahadasha begins, you have to renounce everything. Some even think of going to the Himalayas. But by going to the Himalayas, you don't become a Buddha. If that was the case, then everybody who has gone to the Himalayas, everybody who has escaped and gone to the Himalayas would have become a Buddha. But that is not the real case. Where will you escape? Unless and until you are trapped in the mind. Until you are in the tight grip of the mind, you cannot escape. No matter where you go, whether you go to the Himalayas or whether you renounce everything or whether you wear a saffron robe and apply a tilak and grow a long beard, it is not going to help. And that is why the great spiritual master Bhagwan Raman Maharshi says that the real sannyas is within. And so you should focus within. You should understand what is the true meaning of renunciation. And you should also listen to this beautiful Buddha story that I am going to share in this podcast. What happens when Buddha comes back to his kingdom? It's a beautiful incident, a historic incident and you should definitely know about it. And so I have shared many insights in this podcast that will help you to sail through this beautiful seven years of Ketu Mahadasha. So let's begin. One has to understand that the real enemy is not on the outside but within you. Understand the fact that the greatest enemy of yours is not on the outside but very much inside you and that is I. This I is our ego. Our ego is our greatest enemy. Around the world every minute Millions and millions of love relationships, marriages, friendships, families are broken just because of this I, the me factor. As long as the I remains, the nature of clinging remains. One has to understand that who is this I, this me that you all carry on within you, it is your mind. The nature of the mind is to cling. That is how moon, that is mind, and Rahu, that is clinging, are related to each other. Rahu is the north node of the moon. So as long as the mind is there, the nature of clinging, Rahu, remains. The moment the mind is dropped, it's merged with your heart. The eye starts fading away. That is why every religion encourages you to go beyond this eye, the mind. The Bible has a beautiful verse. It says, 
he must increase but i must decrease only when i no longer remains does the mind cease always remember it is easy to give up money it is easy to give up position it is easy to give up attachment to the mind but it is the most difficult task to break the attachment with my very self with my very individuality with my very existence but as soon as this is broken the mind is annihilated one of the closest disciple of buddha sariputta came and asked how to attain liberation how to attain moksha buddha said i cannot liberate you from this you sariputta could not understand he said please explain what you mean and buddha said if you are looking for liberation go somewhere else but if you want liberation from yourself you have come to the right place i will make you free from yourself so do not ask how you will be liberated you will not survive in your liberation you should ask how to be free from this i how to be liberated from this i this i is our ego and it is always there one has to focus within to overcome it it is a long journey very long but every journey starts with a small step the moment the ego is dropped the i that is the mind cannot hold on so the mind always feels uncomfortable when you with your consciousness start overcoming the ego in the beginning it is going to be very hard very difficult but as you focus on the self by being more and more meditative by turning inwards by consciously focusing on your routine lifestyle you can overcome this ego that the monkey mind goes on feeding for its survival the whole purpose of meditation is to help you overcome the mind meditation is not a way to get out of the mind meditation says just watch the mind and you are out just watch when you meditate just observe the flowing thoughts just witness and you will be able to overcome the mind because the mind is nothing but the traffic of thoughts when you just watch witness the thoughts you stop entertaining the thoughts and then you can concentrate on yourself on your breathing pattern remember meditation is the state of no mind it is not a state of silent mind not of a healthy mind not of a concentrated mind no meditation is the state of no mind no society within you no conditioning within you just you with your pure consciousness the questions are of the mind because the mind likes intellectuality the mind loves logic the mind loves debating the mind loves discriminating the moment you start moving beyond the mind there is no intellectuality you reach the epitome of intelligence because intellectuality is of the mind intelligence is of the heart i therefore love people who follow their heart and so i encourage you all to continue to follow your heart let me tell you all no matter what you all are going through if you are following your heart if your heart is pure then that day will arrive soon when you will find what you have been seeking the great sufi saint and poet rumi quotes what you seek 
is also seeking you a truthful man or a woman is always victorious it takes time good things always take time remember this bad things happen quickly but good things take time bad things happen quickly because the evil cannot last for long but the good can this world is beautiful because still good people men of heart exist had this world been of all intellectuals and logical calculative heads we would have lost the very essence of life which is love finally we all have to come to love but we have forgotten the language of love the last word of buddha was samasti remember just remember the forgotten language just remember samasti just for a few seconds sit down with closed eyes to remember to make a note of where you have been to what depth you have been able to reach what is the taste of silence what is the taste of peace what is the taste of disappearing into the ultimate remember samasti there is nowhere to go there is nowhere to choose you simply be where you are live your life in total acceptance a man who accepts what life provides with a sense of gratitude becomes a buddha and so to you all my fellow travelers and followers and listeners i tell you never leave your family never leave this material world there is absolutely no need to escape only cowards escape the courageous men stay where they are and it is there and there itself that they attain by not clinging by not holding and that is the true path the surest path towards the ultimate consciousness god consciousness krishna consciousness a coward cannot meditate because to meditate tremendous courage is needed only courageous beings can meditate there is a lot of chaos a lot of noise within you and so when you sit for a meditation the moment you close your eyes all of this inside noise the chaos creates havoc within you only a courageous being can put up with this chaos this noise and so to meditate one needs to be courageous a coward cannot put up with this chaos within he or she quickly surrenders to the mind meditation is just a courage to be silent and alone slowly slowly you start feeling a new quality to yourself a new aliveness a new beauty a new intelligence which is not borrowed from anybody but which is growing within you it has roots in your existence meditation happens when there is no mind a certain depth of understanding has to be there only then the truths can be given shallow people cannot follow me they will only condemn me ridicule me it is your relating that is important the more you all can relate to me the more there is joy to your being because it is the word of god and whosoever relates with his word surely experiences the joy within the bliss within remember my words are not important what is important is your silent listening what is important is that my words are not coming from the mind but from my deepest silence so come 
कम यू ऑल एंड लेट्स स्पेंड सम क्वालिटी टाइम विथ आर सेल्फ्स देर इज एब्सोल्यूटली नो नीड टू चूज एनी पाथ बिकॉज देर इज ओनली वन पाथ एंड दैट इज द पाथ ऑफ लव ऑफ डिवोशन राधानाथ स्वामी ऑफ इस्कॉन कोट्स वेदर वी हैव एवरीथिंग और नथिंग इफ वी सिंपली हैव डिवोशन वी एक्चुअली हैव एवरी थिंग while you walk on this path continue to carry on with your responsibilities with your duties to experience the divine to experience god you don't have to escape to the himalayas because no matter where you go as long as you remain a slave of your mind nothing can help and nothing that is spiritual can be attained by going to the himalayas or by choosing a spiritual journey you don't become a saint or a yogi but by being where you are by doing your daily duties by executing your worldly responsibilities and while you do so trying focusing putting efforts towards being more and more meditative remaining centered you can certainly evolve into a spiritual being and that is the real progress when you attain spiritual heights by being very much among the people around you that is how real saints are they don't have to go anywhere they work they focus within and they remain totally surrendered to their master their guru this is how life blossoms this is how the spiritual path evolves this is the way the way of its happening gautam buddha renounced in ignorance and not as a buddha just like anybody he thought that to experience the light the divine he should leave his kingdom and he left he left his wife he left his children he left his father he left his people and the whole kingdom but after 12 years gautam buddha decided to return to his kingdom and he came the buddha came people rushed the whole kingdom welcomed him but not his wife she remained in her palace buddha said to ananda I must go to the palace and meet my father. He must have become very old and my wife and my son Rahul. And so Buddha went to the palace. He was a totally changed man. He went to meet his ailing father and the father was very angry. But Buddha stood in silence. When the father said all that he wanted to say, When all his anger was stormed out on Buddha he looked into Buddha's eyes and he could see that Buddha was unaffected there was no reaction he knew his son he always used to react he was a very hot tempered young man but this man seemed to be a changed man there was no anger no reaction he could see his son standing before him in deep silence his father said say something i have been saying so much to you abusing you but you remain quiet now please say something i have not heard your voice for the last 12 years and i am waiting for you to speak please speak something and buddha spoke for the first time after 12 years his voice was heard in the palace buddha said you are unnecessarily being angry with me i am not the same person who left the palace i am a new being with eyes to see i have achieved the ultimate just look at my face my silence look into my eyes and the depth of my eyes don't be angry i have just come to ask your forgiveness 
that i had to renounce the kingdom but i have brought a bigger kingdom of the inner being and i have come to share it with you and all buddha went to his wife's royal abode and his wife was naturally very angry she belonged to a much larger kingdom she was the daughter of a great warrior after 12 years she was meeting her husband gautam buddha and she too burst out on him with anger she said i am not angry that you renounced the kingdom i am angry that you did not say anything to me when you left do you think i would have prevented you i am also the daughter of a great warrior buddha felt very sad he had never thought about it her anger was not that he had renounced the kingdom her anger was that he did not trust her her love and the thought that she would have interfered in his renunciation she was not that type of ordinary woman she would have rejoiced that he was renouncing the kingdom buddha had to ask for forgiveness he could see the state of his wife he could see that in spite of living her for 12 years still the love had not faded away in fact it had become much deeper than it was his wife yashodhara said for this 12 years i have been carrying only one question to ask you and that question is whatever you have attained and it is certain that you have attained something i can see it in your eyes on your face in your grace my question is whatever you have attained was it not possible to attain it in in the same palace in the same kingdom was renunciation necessary gautam buddha looked into yashodhara's eyes and the answer he gave is something that you all should meditate upon it is one of the most beautiful revelations gautam buddha answered he said to his wife at that time i thought because for centuries it has been said that unless you renounce the world you cannot find the ultimate truth but now i can say with absolute certainty whatever has happened to me could have happened in the kingdom in the palace there was no need to go anywhere and that is the answer to your question to all my followers listeners and fellow travelers there is no need to go anywhere wherever you are whatever you are doing execute your duties and responsibilities and while you do so let there be god within your being there is no need to create compartments between spiritual life and career life your whole life is spiritual that is how it is meant to be human beings are spiritual by nature it comes naturally to them but what prevents them from experiencing the spirituality within them is their utter ignorance the unending desires lust sex power money all of this keep them away from experiencing the beauty within them the spirituality within them and so i appeal to all my listeners and followers never fall for renunciation unless you know what renunciation is and the moment you know what renunciation truly is the very thought of leaving everything will never come to you what is renunciation it is not about leaving this material world it is not about leaving your position it is not about leaving anything it is simply being more and more detached 
it is simply dropping the nature of clinging and that is precisely the nature of rahu the nature of rahu is to cling the more you are rahuish the more you will go on clinging the more you will remain attached and the more you will remain attached the more you will continue to suffer buddha says the root of suffering is attachments we are taught to cling the master is helping you all to get over this nature of clinging understand this this can help you in many ways when you read about buddha's renouncing his kingdom mahavira renouncing his kingdom you just look at the outer circumstances you miss going deeper and the deeper you go you would realize that buddha did not renounce his kingdom he simply renounced his holding on his kingdom there was no more clinging he just left on a dark night he just left to explore the beyond just to realize later that even this was not required he could have stayed without holding without clinging and attain what he had attained outside his kingdom mahavira also renounced but you see that he renounced his palace his pleasures his luxuries in the deeper sense in the real sense he had renounced his clinging his holding to this material worldly things understand the fact that the kingdom was there it had been there from ages even when buddha was not born even when mahavira was not born the kingdom was there even when they renounced the kingdom it still remained with someone buddha did not renounce the kingdom he renounced his clinging to the kingdom remember renunciation means to drop the hold to let go of the hold and the other meaning is not to hold on in the first place to know that what is not yours is not yours but many people have some fancy ideas about renunciation a man says this is my money and now i have renounced my money my wealth my properties so you see until this my remains until this i remains no matter how much you leave behind and how much you travel to the himalayas nothing and i say it again and again in the larger interest of all my followers nothing ever can be attained you just remain the way you are there is no growth the real growth to your being never happens truth is hard and i cannot help than to share the truth with you all understand the fact that the greatest enemy of yours is not on the outside but very much inside you and that is i so renouncing your family is not necessary you should just drop this i this ego and so there is no need to escape your father your mother have spent their whole life to prepare you for a great career do not hurt them and do not run away do the work do your job that you can do very well and while you do so spend quality time in meditation just 20 minutes every morning and every evening that is not much and yet day after day drop by drop a beautiful lake is formed the lake of bliss of peace of joy and then a moment will come when the lake will flow with all its energy and a beautiful lotus the ultimate peak of your consciousness is attained that is the sign of your spiritual growth that is the start of your spiritual growth so come come and focus within let the love within you blossom i know there are people who are negative but always remember a rose is beautiful because it has thorns a lotus is beautiful because it grows in the muddy waters 
द नेगेटिव पीपल अराउंड यू शुड नॉट मेक यू फील लो रादर देर एग्जिस्टन्स शुड मेक यू मोर कॉन्शियस मूव यू मोर टूवर्ड्स विथिन मोटिवेट यू टू लुक विथिन मोटिवेट यू टू टर्न इनवर्ड्स एंड वर्क टूवर्ड्स रियल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन रियल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इज पॉसिबल वेन यू गेट रियल विथ युअर सेल्फ सो गेट रियल राइज अबाउ द मंकी माइंड एंड हेल्प युअर सेल्फ इन एवरी वे पॉसिबल टू इवॉल्व इन टू अ मच लवेबल ह्यूमन बींग अ मच अंडरस्टैंडिंग ह्यूमन बींग ट्रू लव is born out of understanding says the buddha let understanding be the only law of your life understanding is not taught in any college or school it has to be earned by being meditative by turning inwards by self inquiring who am i who am i find the answer to this question let the journey within begin a journey into deep silence knowledge is noisy and truth can be found only in silence deep silence rahu is noisy ketu is the silence that your soul seeks never blame god because whatever you are going through is because of your own past karma remember the pandavas also had to go through many sufferings they lost their kingdom because they were gambling and krishna was with them lord krishna was with pandavas and yet pandavas had to go through many sufferings it simply signify that no matter whether you are with the master or not you have to pay for your past karmas it is only the ignorant beings the foolish fellows who blame god and because they continue to blame god they continue to suffer in life and i am here to help you to come out of this and realize that whatever is happening in your life is because of your own karma so face your karma and finish it don't try to escape to the himalayas don't try to become a monk because you are failing in your material life remember a man who fails in material life will never succeed in the spiritual life unless you come to the spiritual world with gratitude and a satisfied heart you will not progress on the spiritual path so always learn to balance your life always learn to be here in this material world and while being here ensure that you continue to focus on your spiritual growth that is the way the way is to find god experience god by being here and not going anywhere else and so when your ketu mahadasha begins you don't have to think about going to himalayas or to renounce this material world because as i mentioned the real meaning of renouncing or renunciation is not about dropping the material things but basically dropping the i factor the ego dropping the ego dropping the mind that is what real renunciation is all about and so by being here in this material world itself when you execute your duties 
your responsibilities and while doing so you don't remain attached you don't have any personal agendas then in the true sense you will progress on your spiritual path and that is what the great master mahotar baba ji quotes and so ketu mahadasha is indeed a beautiful period and i say it as beautiful because it is a blessing in disguise it is the period when you get the necessary break to come closer to yourself to look within to turn inwards otherwise in rahu mahadasha you are continuously running running behind fame power lust and so many things but when ketu mahadasha begins you have the necessary environment the necessary support to look within to turn inwards and to realize the true essence of this human life now many people become frustrated during ketu mahadasha why because they are too much in the grip of the mind they are rahuish they have been running their whole life they have been used to having lots of power domination and now in ketu mahadasha they have to stop they have to pause and that is what makes them restless that is how these people start blaming ketu or ketu mahadasha because they don't understand the message of ketu shallow people will not understand the message of ketu just two days ago a man messaged me that he lost 25 lakhs in stock market and he writes he messages me that he has visited a temple and in spite of visiting a temple he lost 25 lakhs in stock market now tell me what god has to do with his 25 lakhs but people continue to blame god sometimes i think that god must be so much under pressure because so many people are unnecessarily blaming god and by blaming god they simply make their own life more and more miserable always remember when you start thinking that because you have been to a temple you are suffering some loss it is not you it is the rahu it is the devil it is the black magic power that is speaking through you it is the black magic power that makes you feel this way and pulls you away from god and the more you move away from god the more your faith becomes weaker and weaker the more the black magicians and your enemies who are using black magic can target you and eventually finish you so it is up to you it is up to your consciousness your awareness that which path you want to choose the path of faith or the path of fear the path of love or the path of hate 
always remember you are free to choose but you are not free from the consequences of the choice that you make so always be aware before choosing your path because what you choose is what you become It is said that love is contagious. What you love is what you become. And that is why I insist and I appeal to all my close followers that love but love something of the higher altitudes. Something that can take you beyond this material world and help you experience the beauties of this unseen world, the godly world. enough for now remember to meditate and chant every day jai shri ganesha jai guru गम गणपत नम ओ गम गणपत नम ओ गम गणपत नम